have a lot of uh, favorite stories that I've done and um, stories that I'm incredibly proud of um, because they, they made a huge difference. Um, a lot of stories have resulted in laws changing or um, uh, people's lives shifting. Um, I like to think even sometimes perhaps lives saved because they read something that made them think hard about what they were doing in their own lives or, or uh, were, became more aware of, of risks and, 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 and problems. Um, one of the stories that I'm most proud of though, um, I wrote a story about a boy whose family was homeless in San Francisco. And it stemmed from a statistic that 2,000 kids in San Francisco schools were considered homeless, meaning they were living in situations that were not stable. And I thought, 2,000 kids, that's like one per, for every classroom in the city. What does that mean to the schools in San Francisco? What does that look like? And so I decided to follow one boy who was homeless. His name was Rudy. And his family was sleeping in an emergency shelter on mats on the ground. And every morning they had to get up and take all their possessions and go across the street to a storage facility because they couldn't leave their, their belongings at the, at the shelter. They had to wait till the facility opened to put their stuff in the storage facility. And that opened at 8, which was when they were serving breakfast at Rudy's school. So he didn't make it in time. He then boarded two buses to get to school. And I remember just walking with them, just sort of being a fly on the wall. And he was walking up the hill with his mom um, after taking two buses to get there. And he's walking up the hill and he said, Mom, I'm hungry and I'm cold. And the mom didn't say anything because as a mom who loves her children, what do you say when your child is hungry and cold and you can't do anything about it? Um, we followed Rudy the rest of the day um, at school. He got there late um, and begged the principal to get a breakfast uh, after they had finished serving and got to class 10 minutes after the bell had rang when all of his classmates were seated on the rug and the teacher was reading a story. And all the teacher knew was that this child was late and when he sat on the floor, he just checked out. And we described Rudy's life and what it was like to wake up in a homeless shelter and, and how his family had gotten to this point and why he looked tired when he sat on the rug and why he was late arriving to class. And the story ran and was read by the community and the emails and the phone calls started coming in. And uh, a particularly wealthy businessman and his wife read the story and called the mayor of San Francisco and within four days of the story running, they had three million dollars gathered together for homeless families in San Francisco. And aside from that, thousands of dollars poured in for Rudy's family. And since that time, the wealthy donor has chipped in more millions, other people have, have contributed. And the way homeless families uh, are addressed in San Francisco has completely shifted in terms of how they get housing and how they help stabilize these families and what policies they're using. And, um, and a lot of people point back to that initial story for people to start looking at this from a different perspective, to start looking at it through Rudy's eyes. And, um, and, and I don't want to take credit for it because it, it really was Rudy and his story, but it showed me the power of telling that story, of showing people something that they hadn't seen and they didn't understand. And what that has meant, I mean, you know, it inspired people to donate millions of dollars. And to me, the fact that I could put words on paper and, and inspire people to donate millions of dollars is um, amazing.